So the other day I recorded a video running pistol bunch tight end kind of just as jokes and memes and actually I think it's a pretty cool scheme. So today we're in practice mode. I'm going to telling you and kind of showing you really we're going through the process together building this into an actual scheme. So let's get started. First and foremost, when you're building a scheme, you have to have a power play, I ideally a couple of power plays. Very rarely is our power play a run, but in this case it is. And it's called the speed option again on a pistol bunch tight end. Kansas City Chiefs playbook. Now, what is a power play, Civil? A power play is essentially a play that you can call against any defense, any situation. You need a yard. You can call this play, and you're going to get a yard. You're going to beat the majority of defenses, and you're so comfortable calling it that you can almost do it without thinking, okay? Think about Madden 22, PA boot over. Madden 24 will go double post. Uh, verticals, right? We can go... Madden, man, will be another one. Madden, like 17 halfback dig out. There's a lot of plays that do this, okay? Trips, tight end, verticals, bunch of verticals. Essentially, just a play that you can call whenever you need to against the defense. And you'll be able to pick up decent yards as well. Not just a little check down, decent yards. In this case, it's this player right here, speed option. We're going to call it. We're going to try it. If we need to, pitch it. We're going to hurdle while we pitch. And we'll be able to dumb out the defense pretty frequently. And that is why it becomes a power play. I average like 12 yards per per uh, snap of this one. You see, geez, Will Levis just got lit up right there. And if it's a pass play, you need to get thousands of reps with this bad boy. Not in practice mode, but in games, all right? Because our power play this time, our main one is a run play, we are going to have to master some passing. The reason I say this is that so many people I meet and I talk to about building their schemes and whatnot, and they want to be super run heavy. That's fine. You want to be run heavy, that is super cool, whatever. Here's the fact of the matter. And this, uh, uh, real life teams run into this all the time. You see it a lot at the lower levels of college and in high school, where if you want to be able to win a lot of games consistently, especially the big games, your Super Bowls, right? Your games against your rivals, your best friend, whatever, you got to be able to pass the ball. You have to. Even in the MCS, you have to be able to pass the ball or play incredible defense. But that, no one does that. Almost, almost nobody does that. So you got to be able to pass the ball. In this formation, we're a little bit lacking on pass plays. Let me hide my face cam really fast, and I'll show you kind of the pass plays we have to look at. We have uh, cross drag on the left. We have spot Y option. Both of those catch my attention. They have what I call unique routes, where spot Y option has a corner route, and cross drag appears to have a deep in route, and then a crosser. We need to check those out, though. And then we also have PA curls. I'll be honest, just from the play art here, I'm thinking PA curls sucks, although we will, of course, take a gander at it. So let's go to cross drag here, and let's just look at what this play is. Let's look at the routes, and yeah, I was right. So if we look at our running back. That route is nothing. We're going to get rid of that route pretty much every single time. And double drags on our in inside wide receivers, not great. Who cares? But we have a deep in. That's cool. And then we have a crosser, which is also really, really cool. So some things we can test out here. So I'm just going to call this play. And typically when you have like a crosser that you're trying to get open, you want to have a clear out route, which essentially is a route on the side of the field where the crosser or the, the route you're trying to clear out for, where that route ends, you want to streak to push back any deep zones on that side to give space underneath. So right here, we're going to streak that tight end right. We're going to see, we have the drag right there. I didn't love the spacing between the in route and the crosser right there. I don't know if you guys saw that, but that was kind of bad. And that is kind of something I think is going to happen a lot. Even right here, I don't love the spacing between the, the crosser and the in route. If this was like real life or something, that, that's I think that's plenty of space. But because users are such a big deal in Madden, you need – I like to have a lot of space between my routes. I like where that crosser is ending up. I don't care about the sheds, by the way. The sheds, as long as you're being realistic with yourself about time and pocket, you're fine. Practice mode sheds are sometimes just very ridiculous. Um, but overall, I mean, I like where this route is is ending up. So I think this crosser is really good. The dig, I don't love the dig route as much. And there's been times where digs have been good. Especially if, if I were to motion him out, like, right here. Right? To just give maybe a little bit better space. Yeah, see, that that spacing between the crosser and the in route in that case right there is really, really nice. I need my offensive line to do better. I don't love having to motion this guy out. But it's something I could do. There's something I could do, right? Then we have crosser. We'll throw the crosser right there. That's going to do, do a good job. And I think I've seen this beat man a couple of times as well. And now we have a nice backside in route, which could get open. Although I'm not a fan. I'm not crazy about this route combo, but it's fine. It's fine right there. Crosser didn't get a ton of separation. Interesting. I'm very annoyed right now with the pass rush. 
This thing needs to stop. This pra practice mode pass rush is a real thing. For any of my practice mode nerds, you guys know what I'm talking about. And gosh, it's annoying. Right there, I didn't love, love the separation again between the crosser and the deep dig. But what I am identifying here, and this is kind of a big deal, is using... So, mm, what's the best way for me to word this? To build your own scheme, especially from scratch, a lot of you guys, a lot of people struggle with this. And the reason being is that they try to do it before they have any knowledge of the overwhelming space. It's as if you went into, you try to make a new dessert food, but you don't how, know how regular desserts work. So you don't know how shipping works. You don't know how manufacturing, how uh, recipe, how, how scaling a, a recipe works, how any distribution, anything. You don't know how anything works. So you can't, it's extremely hard and you're at a high risk rate. Whereas if you came from, I don't know, let's say you used to work at the biggest cake making company in the world and then you tried making your own, your own dessert from scratch, you probably have a better chance of starting or of being successful. All right, maybe a bad analogy, but what I'm getting at here is that I'm very well aware of the meta in this game. And one of the biggest, most like meta route combos in this Madden is this right here, where we have a underneath drag, a post right next to it, a flat, and then a halfback streak. This route combo right here on the right side of your screen is going to beat the majority of zone blitzes, man blitzes, man coverage, zone coverage. And then we also have a nice little clear out route right here, which is trying to help push any deep zones back to get our post open underneath and could also expose blown coverage. This route combo is something that you will see ran by comp players 50% of their pass plays, literally. I ran it a ton in the last tournament. I got it ran against me a lot in the past tournament by other good players. This is very popular. It's very, very good. So how can we take that right there, which we know is so good, can we apply it to what we're doing already? right? Apply what works in other stuff and how can you do it in your own thing? So let's go back to this, right? Let's do this. And holy sweet Jeebus. What do we have here? We have that same route combo, but from pistol bunch tight end and instead of from bunch halfback strong nasty. Now the only difference is that our point wide receiver is on a crosser instead of that hot routed post. That could be an issue. It's something that we'd have to test and see, do we need to put a slot apprentice right here or not? And, you know, we could call it a few times a practice mode, see how it is. And I like to get these reps in practice mode. I think it's really, really good. But it's also super beneficial to get into actual games, into live games, and to test the uh, to test whatever you're trying to do against a user, against somebody making some adjustments, right? Even though a lot of players online don't make that many adjustments, just test it and just see how good it is. What I like to do specifically is go into a game where I don't care if I win or lose. Okay, who cares? Win or lose, don't care and call like three pass plays all game. And then see, is this working? Is this not working? Is it good? Is it not good? Why is it working? Why is it not? You know what I mean? Just test it get, and get reps, right? If you're playing high school football, high school bath, whatever sport, and you don't practice your plays ever, you don't have scrimmages, you don't have reps, you don't have walkthroughs, you're going to suck. You know what I mean? You just will. Oh, that's open. That's why that halfback streak so good. We just got a poor accuracy. That's so unfortunate. So what I would do is, I would go into a game, and I would test this. It doesn't have to be against a friend either. You can just do it in a regular game and just test it, right? Try not to – ideally, it's in a game mode. You don't care if you win or lose. I see so many people make a scheme of practice mode, then go into their CFM playoffs and get molly whopped. And it's like, dude, what are you doing? Why did you do that? Why, were, why was your first time in a game that you care about? What a dumb decision that – seriously, what a dumb decision that is. And now you're mad, and now you're not having any fun in the game because you decided to make a dumb decision. And yeah, so watching this crosser, there's a chance I'd rather have a slot apprentice post right there. So it's just something I'm keeping in mind for myself, right? Boom, jeez, we got immediate pressure. Jeez, that's never fun. Never, never, ever fun. But yeah, so that's one play right there where this is a high-level pass play. Oh, I think could be a high-level pass play, almost like a power play for passes. The halfback streak is so good, dude. And so we got one. And now I'm like, okay, I could call this against a lot of coverages. And I could call that pass play and that speed option against a lot of defenses I see. Now, will that by itself win you a lot of games? Mm, probably not. Maybe. You might be able to beat some players, but not very many good players just calling two plays. You know, the, the best of plays can be adjusted to. So we have that cross-drag play, which is all kind of attacking the middle and right side of the field. But then we got spot Y option. Let's see what this corner route looks like. This corner route is a short corner. Okay. This halfback route is stupid. Let's get rid of him. The tight end route is weird. 
you don't see this sort this sort of choice route very often for the tight end. And then on the left side, we already have a flat route. We already have a corner route. One of the best route combos in Madden is just a basic flood. So we're going to streak our outside left wide receiver, and now it's a flood. And honestly, to the wide side of the field with a short corner, I'm going to fade him. Let's just call it. This is very, very basic. And this corner route appears to have the ability to beat man coverage. If we think it's man, we could also take that flat and turn him into a zig. So we could do like this now. Oops. Oops, oops, oops. We could do like this. And now we have a couple routes that can beat man coverage. Yeah, you see, man, geez, the zig did not beat man coverage very well. The corner route did. But the zigs will typically beat man. It's just something that does come down to some RNG, just how the game plays. Go right here again. We have boom, underneath. Got it. Able to get a few yards. And just like that, now we have a little flood concept. Not the not a play that you could really spam, but a really good complementary play. I call these like complementary plays, kind of restraint plays. Okay? Because again, it's just a basic flood. But if someone's running, you know, cover four hard flats on you, well, you can throw a corner out against it. Someone's you know, you know what I mean? You can you have the ability to throw stuff on it, which is nice. Very, very basic combo. But you know, for basics, I mean this combo right here is gonna get open against the majority of players you play online. Oh, we got the corner out. Able to highball that over the defender, able to catch it, gift wraps very big, and learning how to throw corner routes is huge as well. But bang, just like that, we're kind of cooking now. Now, another very popular route combo I see all the time in Comp Madden, this is one that I actually don't run, but I see all the time and I know it's really good, is you have a short corner route, typically a stock short corner. We have that. And you hot route a deeper corner next to it. People call this double corner. Well, right now I have Slot Apprentice on this outside guy. So... What if I do that? And then I need a clear out, so we'll put B on a streak. This is a little makeshift of one of the most popular route combos in Madden 24. This is very, very good on the left side. The right side, I don't know what I want to do with this tight end yet. It's an interesting little choice route. We'll just keep them. Now we have double corners. And you can see we're able to throw that. And one of the corner routes is typically going to be open, I think. Now, I don't know. Literally, I'm just telling you guys. I don't know if... It'd be better to have this corner out right here on the outside or because of how our master activator right now. It'd be better, smarter to have it coming from the inside guy. I don't know. Literally, I, I, don't, I don't know. We'll try both. And that will just kind of help determine how we're going to build our scheme. I had, I had Y. I missed the read. Jeez. And that's why you want to get good at just, you got to get comfortable running the plays over and over and over again. Just get decent at them, right? Um, and, and really learn. Really, you got to really focus on learning the reps, learning the different things. Right there, dang! I had that route early. I got to highball that. That's a mistake. That's okay when you make it the first couple of times you call the play. But when you keep on calling it, you got to learn what the different looks are. Right there, got Y. Gonna highball that bad boy. Good, 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 good. And I'm thinking this has potential to be a really good play. Potentially, this could be a power play. Because I know it, it is out of other formations. I know it is, but I'm not 100% sure out of this one. Let's go that choice route. That looks like it could do a good job against man coverage. That looks like he'll typically beat man. I don't know if that's true, but that's what I'm thinking. That's a unique route as well, which is kind of cool. Let's see him right here. He just sits. Look, he sat underneath the man or match that was. Interesting route. I don't know how much I like it. It's interesting, though. Something to keep, him, keep in mind, and I'll probably use it in-game a little bit. Oh, we have that short corner. Got him. Bang. And now we have another route combo where... This one is definitely one where I'm like, I'd have to take this into games and see how good this is. Because practice mode won't do this one justice, I don't think. It never does any of them justice, but this one specifically, I'm like, I don't know. Good dot right there, though. I can see the potential here. I can definitely see the potential. So just like that, we have a few pass plays. Potentially a couple really good pass plays. I think cross drags would be really, really good. Let's go. That route. That route might be tough. Especially against man, that route might be tough. And again... This is just me testing things. I really don't know too much right now. On Civil GG, there will eventually be probably a bunch of end schemes. So if you want like the actual write-ups and stuff for this, uh, with actual pictures, everything's uh, tested, battle ready, free to go. Civil GG link to that is top of the description. Probably not out when you're first seeing, but we have a bunch of other schemes already over there. And one of the best things about eBooks is why even when I was creating my own schemes, I was always big on getting eBooks. And still, I don't really get eBooks anymore, but like because I, I just teach, but I, I, I learn so much from watching other people's other people play is that even if you don't run a formation or even if you don't want to run what somebody else runs, you can learn from what they're doing. Don't you think NFL coaches pay attention to what other NFL teams are doing? Right? And they might not steal exactly word for word, although a lot of them do. It's why coaches say it's a copycat league all the time. But you still got to learn what people are doing. So if you're interested in that, 
whether it's this scheme specifically or other stuff, just learning either how to run things correctly, how to take things, put them into your own words, essentially, whatever. Civil.gg, link to the top description, code premium. Now, so we have a couple of decent pass plays. I'm curious about this run play. Halfback counter is never good, but we have a halfback dive here. Run plays, a lot of times in my experience, especially like handoffs, like you kind of got to test them against specific defenses uh, in game. So you just kind of got to get them game reps. Pulling from some things in the past, typically pistol handoffs are pretty bad. Options can be good, which that speed option is really, really good. But like handoffs are typically not great, although we've gotten some big runs. Practice mode just isn't the best for run plays a lot of the times. It really isn't, unfortunately. Um, it's just how it is. So we go here again, bang. It could be good. It might not be. I'd have to test this a lot in game and see. It could be a nice, ideally, best case scenario, it's a really nice counter to like people who are gearing up to speed option on the outside. Go half back, dive up the middle, be able to get consistently five yards off of it, right? Boom, you know, hand it off, immediately juke outside or something. I don't know. But you get what I'm saying? Like, ideally, you have that little counter. Because you do want, in any scheme, even if you're a pass-heavy guy, you do want good run plays. I don't care. I watch the best passers in the world in tournaments. They run the ball, right? You go to something like, you know, people around, I don't have bunch here, but people run gun bunch, and they call inside zone numerous times. People will run bunch strong nasty and call RPO zone rebubble a, a, a thousand times, right? So keep that in mind. You want to have some sort of run element. This one's, again, unique because we have the speed option, which I'm building, which is really why I want to run this. Um, because I think this is just such a cool, potentially really fun and just big hitter play. I just think it's really cool for that. Uh, so that's why I want to build around it. Typically, I do build around pass plays. Um, this one's just, I mean, it's just a little bit different. Um, and each scheme will have its own things. A big thing you got to ask yourself is why are you running an offense? Some offenses can be fun, right? The reason I would run this offense is because I think that speed option, one, gives a ton of people issues. You can't do it on any other formation. And it's fun, right? So it defeats the meta. It's different. Or no, it defeats the meta. Uh, it's not, you can't do it in other formations. And it's fun. If you are running a certain play, and it could be, it, it doesn't give you any advantage over other formations, right? I see so many people call these, you know, pass the ball 90% of the time. But then they, they pass the ball from a, ooh. They pass the ball from a formation where you could do everything and more from gun bunch. It's like, why not just call gun bunch at that point? You know what I mean? Don't be different just to be different. You want to be different with some sort of purpose. And it is fun to be different, dude. I came up in Comp Madden running my own individual skins, very unique skins. I still do that a lot of the times, too. Very, this year, probably more than ever, I've ran more just hardcore meta. But even, even still, I mean, we've, ran, we've done a lot of our own stuff, which is really, really cool. So you just don't want to run different stuff just so, oh, I'm, ha, ha I'm different. Right? Have a purpose. Find a reason why you want to run a certain formation. This speed option gives me a really fun reason to use this, and it's actually really good. We're not just doing it for what I call attention seekage purposes. It's actually fun. It's actually pretty good. Right? So that's a couple of pass plays. Seem decent. Speed option is really good. Dive, whatever. It has a gimmick play built in in this jet touch pass, which a gimmick play is always really nice. I could see this being really good against man coverage because we'll be able to hit the edge, I think. Let's see. Boom. Yeah, I can see this potentially being good against man. Just typically touch passes are. And I can see this being good for short. Ooh, here's man covered. I'm curious. See, this is man. We should be able to get the edge, I think. Boom. Yeah, see, that's where I'm like, ooh, if they go man coverage and they're over adjusted over to the left side, touch pass back the other way could be really cool. I also think I've seen people use this in the short yardage where they immediately juke up, and it's just very hard to shoot these, these touch passes just up the middle. And so you're able to get like a free yard or so. Right here, ooh, kind of a man blitz it looks like. Touch pass, bang, make that block. Oh, I see potential. I'd have to try it in game and see. I'd have to try it in game and see. But then let's pretend short yardage right here. This is something I might try. Boom, jurtle up. And there's, a, there's an opportunity for some nice short yardage gains. So that's a pretty cool little gimmick play right there. Big thing though, right? Analyze and adjust. See if something's working. If it's working, pound it. If it's not working, cut it from your playbook. Too many people use terrible plays too often. For no justification. This play never works. Let me call it again. Yeah, good job, idiot. But no, sir, you know what I'm saying, though? Like, really analyze the plays you're calling and see if they work or not. If they're not working, cut them. If they are working, build upon them, right? Something else that has become very meta in the past couple of years is audibling around. So while in this scheme, I would focus on pistol bunch to end, it's good to know what formations we have around us that we could audible to. One of them, in this case, would be tight Y off. Now you're matching personnel. 
pistol bunch tight end has three wide receivers, one tight end, one halfback. That's called 11 personnel, one halfback, one tight end. So if we're looking for other 11 personnel formations, tight way off is a really good one that we can audible to. Why is it good? Well, it has an RPO, which is meta this year. These RPO zones uh, or just RPO bubbles are really, really good. This is RPO bubble right here. We also have PA go slot cross, really good pass play. Tight end corner, really good pass play. Um, and then we also have a touch pass from this too, which is cool. But just think about this really fast, right? We could audible, potentially, we could audible from pistol bunch tight end to this RPO right here. And then we could just hand the ball off or we could throw this RPO. And now they have to defend that along with our entire main scheme, right? They defend that. And then, you know, let's say we have a good pass play. Tight end corner seems good. Again, I'm not really testing this, right? I mean, look at this pass play. We could audible to this, quick snap this ball. We got two deep corner routes and then an angle route over the middle of the field. Throw the angle. Nice catch. Now, we have, I mean, just from however long this video is, we have a little mini scheme already, right? Really cool inside of Ch uh, Kansas City Chiefs playbook. Another formation we could audible to is Bunch Strong Nasty, which happens to be one of the best passing formations in the game with plays like... Well, immediately we have RPO zone read bubble, really high level. This one's a little bit different than the one of other playbooks, but I think it runs almost the same, but really, really good. We have PA corner, which is cool. We have PA cross, which is cool. We have PA, or we have mesh flat spot, which is really, really cool. And then uh, PA double post, is, I, it's like a newer play, brand new this year. I've never ran it. But yeah, now we have some things where if we need to, we can go into one of the best passing formations in the game in case we need to throughout the course of a game. We go to it on second and six or go to it in a two minute drill, right? Kind of up to you. And, you know, let's see what we have under center. Ideally, we have some decent stuff under center. Let's say we have I'm Ford close, which is nice. Do we have anything cool from, uh, from here? Any, uh, it doesn't look like anything too nasty. Bunch X nasty. Let's say wing tight nasty. No RPO stretches, unfortunately, which is, well, a little unfortunate, but not the end of the world. Um, but, I mean, yeah, the, right there, I mean, dude, we have, just from this, we have a little mini scheme. And then it's just getting stuff down, right? You don't want to have a super, everyone... Man, so many people first try to have such a super deep playbook. It's like, man, slow down. Master the plays that you're good at, right? You're playing high... Jeez. Master the plays. Fumble. You're playing high school football. Do coaches install 50 things at once? Not a good coach. You master the starting points, and then you build off of that. You can't master everything all at once, right? If you're in offense for three days, right, and you play... Let's say you play 20 games in that three days. You're not going to know all the stuff in the offense yet. That's fine. You need to get good at the stuff that you that, that, that you know is good immediately, right? And if you don't know even how to find stuff that's good, that's where you learn from other players. I recommend running meta stuff, running civil.gg schemes, getting good at those things, and then figure out if you really want to do your own thing, figure out how you can apply those same things over, just like we did with some of the route combos, right? That is how. And then you can add your own little twist things. One of my favorite things is take a meta scheme and add a little twist into it. That makes it my own, and I'm not putting myself at a huge competitive disadvantage like so many people are. So many people are just willing to put them, jeez, willing to put themselves at a competitive disadvantage for no reason at all. It's stupid. You just don't like winning. Winning is fun, all right? It's simple as that, boys, okay? If you guys enjoyed this video, do let me know. Uh, it's a little bit different. I think it's a cool video, uh, and I enjoy doing it. I used to only do, like, I building schemes used to be, like, the only thing I did in Madden. I thought it was just really, really fun. So if you enjoyed it, let me know. I can make more videos like this. I just need the feedback from you guys. And hopefully you were able to learn something from this. All right, boys. I'll see you all in the next one. Check out Civil.gg. Link is in the top description. Code premium.